Hey, what's up, everybody? BDF44 coming to you another video. All right, so I just wanted to say hello to everybody, step in and uh, do a therapy session. I saw something that kind of prompted me to speak, I guess. This is nothing new, unfortunately, you guys. This is just the same old run-of-the-mill racism conversation. I hate it as much as you do, but sometimes you just see stuff. It just reminds you of of a topic we'd like to uh, to heal from. And uh, it just shows us that we got uh, some work to still do. So it was, uh, this was in Georgia. It was a pastor. Uh, he was in a white neighborhood. Um, and a lady uh, who was out of town asked him to uh, house sit for her or at least just keep an eye on the house, water the grass, stuff like that. He figured he'd do her a favor, you know what I mean? No big deal. He's a neighbor across the street. I guess... Uh, the police were called, they, uh, you know, someone saw him watering the grass as a black man, you know, that that's illegal in this country, in certain neighborhoods, so of course they called the cops on him. Uh, the cops arrived and more or less uh, asked him for his ID. He was offended by the situation, didn't uh, necessarily give them the warmest response, but he was on private property with uh, permission and they arrived asking him for identification. He didn't want to give it to him. They asked him what he was doing. He said, obviously watering the grass, as you can see, with the water hose in his hand, literally watering the grass at that time. But they were uh, more or less just, you know, trying to trying to get him to show ID and ultimately put him in handcuffs. You know, and he was essentially saying, what have I done? You know, what? why am I being bothered in this way, et cetera? What is going on here? They said, well, how... You know, he said, all I'm doing is watering the grass. He said, well, how do I know? That's what the cop asked him. How do I know that you're just here watering the grass? And the man's holding the water hose still on as he's asking him this question. It's like, if this was a perfect world, we would be able to clearly understand. We would all be able to clearly understand each other's position. Unfortunately, this world isn't perfect. And I often find that people don't understand ours. I understand that there's a very, very naive way of looking at things in a lot of part, a lot of people's minds as it pertains to this country. If you see a certain thing that appears to be a threat, you call the authorities, the authorities come get the threat out, everything's fine. But that is not the world everybody lives in in this country. This country doesn't get the same thing. It doesn't give the same thing to everyone. And I, and I just get very, mighty frustrated when we don't acknowledge that across the board. We all have a different experience here in, on Earth, and we all have a different experience here in this country. And when it comes to how people are treated in this country, it definitely is a case-by-case -case basis that sometimes does not align properly with what we believe should be fair, what I believe should be fair. And in this case, I can say that I see the concern from people saying that they don't know who this person is. The lady who ultimately called the cops came up later on, vouched for him once she realized who he was, but she initially had called the cops when she didn't know who he was because he was a black man on a lawn in a white neighborhood. Now she knew the man, but called the cops on him because she thought he could possibly be any of the black people in this world that she didn't know. Not the one that she knew. And of course the cops took her word for it, didn't ask her for ID, didn't as much ask her her name when she walked up in the footage that I saw. She just walked up with her skin as leverage and essentially said, oh, yeah, I called the cops, but I didn't know it was him. Yeah, he's cool. And proceeded to leave the situation alone. The cops proceeded to of course, as they're trained to do, acknowledge the lady when she says the black man is okay and then proceed to move on. Because there's no problem once a white lady vouches for the black man, obviously, regardless of who she actually is. Because we actually never found out. But she and her honest word walked up to the cops and proceeded to give them her blessing <laughs> to release the African-American citizen and allow him to continue about his life as a free person. 
This is why I don't like listening to people tell me that I can't use the race card. Because I don't have it to use. It's not us using it. It's instances such as these that occur over and over and over again to where it becomes so consistent that we have enough to talk about here. <laughs> That's all it is. It's not that I'm sitting here saying, yo, this is something that I made up and you need to believe it. No, it's, there's a lot of evidence. A lot of entitlement. And a lot of things that we do not question in regards to how these things go. Those cops believed that everything they did was fine. Because the lady they perceived to not be a threat came and gave them the okay to tell them that the person that they were called to believe was a threat was fine. Now, there's a million things and a half wrong with that from a security standpoint, from a profiling standpoint, from a human standpoint. There's a million different things wrong with that. But never mind, because in this country, we perceive things as such and we move as such. And that, my friends, is extremely dangerous. Never mind ethically wrong. Never mind racist. Never mind any of that. It's dangerous. When your cops do that, I was, I'm a security guard. All right. I'm not a cop. I'm not a, I'm not a praying, a paid, you know, I'm not a Marine like my big brother, my little brother, even though he's my big brother. I ain't trained like that. But I know the difference between allowing something to get over on you and not. And I'm telling you, when you vet people that way, you leave yourself open, you leave your team open and you leave the environment open to be compromised. And you're a cop. You're supposed to be the only line of defense between whatever's harming citizens and themselves. And if you're vetting people saying, ah, that skin color looks pretty good, her word is, is vouched. Ah, that skin color doesn't look pretty good. Your word is crap. If you're looking at things that way, you're not going to be able to defend the people you're supposed to be defending. If that's how you're strategizing out there on the field, yeah. You're not going to be very good at your job. And that part, <clears throat> that part right there, because of the presence of agreed upon racism, their, their job is compromised every time they behave that way. It's compromised each and every time they behave that way. Each and every time they approach the field that way, they are leaving it the, the job itself undone, in my opinion. And there's a lot of different things that people talk about when we talk about profiling, but we rarely talk about that. Like, you can't vet people that way. And if we're training our cops to vet people that way, it's why so much doesn't get caught. <laughs> it's why so much goes slips through the cracks. It's why so much organized crime and, and unorganized crime continues to take place because they're searching for the wrong things for reasons that are not right. Because of norms that were embedded in their heads just by way of culture. We leave ourselves vulnerable. And see, these are the type of things that I just look at and I say, racism is a low frequency energy because of the fact that it makes you zoom in on the on it and not zoom out on all of the things that it affects. That's why it's such a low frequency thing. Because it's because in situations like this, both sides are gonna come to the come come to the conversation talking about treatment and not efficiency. That's why it's so low level. That's why racism doesn't work. Because it allows for so much to not be accounted for. You're looking at my face, you say that black person is this, 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 and this based on the other black people that you've seen, but what you don't take into account in that case is that I'm from places that they've never been, raised around mindsets that they don't know of, with cultures that they've never heard of, under religions that they've never heard of. Like these are things that are real when you're looking at people from skin color to skin color to skin color. So when you rope us all together, or rope any people all together, and don't take these things into account, look at what all you're not accounting for. How can you see all the blind spots? How can you know where someone's coming from? Physically, figuratively, how can you possibly know what you're looking at when you blanket everyone that way? Yeah, she's cool because she's white. Yeah, he's cool because he's black. You can't do it. It doesn't work. 
eventually that's going to lead to the worst of things. And when I say the worst of things, you vet things enough that way eventually to lead to the end of the world. In my mind. That it just begets more and more and more and more and more problems. As long as you continue to let things slip through the cracks without effectively identifying what it is that you're dealing with. So that's just part of the conversation. <laughs> Them cops were totally out of bounds because they were naive as to think that just because they understood that they saw a black person and that a white person was walking up to them telling them that that black person was cool, more or less, that they had done their jobs. That they had effectively protected the neighborhood. When she could, effect, in fact, pull out a gunshot, both of them, because of how vulnerable they were when she approached. And that man was in handcuffs and he wasn't even uh, violating in any way. Not only that, but they ended up charging him with some type of charge that essentially, you know, identified him as somebody who was trying to stop them from from doing their job. That's the best way I know how to describe the charge that they gave him. Now, they later dropped the charge, but there was never a crime, and he was harassed, profiled, and falsely accused. And all of this is on camera. All of this is on body cam for us to see. And to me, the cops, you know, looking at the, the, the footage they were talking about, you know, at the end of that footage, they were saying, all he had to do was talk to us. We're reasonable guys. And that is the problem with this country right now. That is one of a hundred million problems that I see. Because of the lack of sensitivity between certain parties, it seems, and I'll, I'll say it seems just to be as fair as possible, but because of the disconnect there, people don't realize when they're being rude or disrespectful or just downright evil toward people because of what's agreed upon in this country in a lot of situations. That black man was supposed to effectively accept being harassed by those police officers because they were called unjustly in regards to him. He's supposed to accept that and all of this is reasonable because his position as the person receiving that bullshit is supposed to be accepted in this country. That's the problem. Black people and people of color, poor people, whoever feels they're, involved, they're a part of this, have to take on crap that the others do not. And that is supposed to be accepted in the other's eyes as if it's, it's absurd that they don't. As if they are doing something wrong by not accepting the bullcrap thrown at them. What do you mean that I'm not supposed to be able to harass you uh, to the benefit of my own, my own mental health? What do you mean that I can't call the cops on a black person? Clearly, he's black. Obviously, he needs to be called. The cops, the cops need to be called. Like, this is the stuff that's agreed upon in this country. Why? I think it's two truths. I think it's two truths. One, because... I think some things have been done that have painted us in the wrong light. I think we've engaged in some behaviors that have given the enemy plenty of ammo, as I often like to say. We don't help ourselves in some cases. And two, because we've been taught not to love ourselves very much. <laughs> we've been taught not to appreciate our features, we're not to appreciate our, our characteristics, not to appreciate our, our voices and the way that we speak. It's not proper English, so to speak. We've been taught that our features are supposed to be made fun of and copied, but not appreciated when they're naturally put on us. Uh, we've been taught that in other countries, in certain cases, black people hate themselves too, and even more so than we do, want to bleach their skin all over the place, stuff like that, don't want to look black, don't want their kids to play with black babies. You know, and then you got the parallels, as we always say, with Black Friday, where they give stuff away for free. Don't don't respect value at all on Black Friday or, or a black cloud is over your head. So suddenly you got nothing but good stuff, bad stuff coming your way or a black cat walks across you. Now you got bad luck. Or, you know, it's just a lot of stuff that, 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 that parallels that way. It lends itself to that way to where even if you don't partake in racist behavior, you're still going to look at dark and light that way. So it's going to lend itself to certain things that you may just fear or appreciate or welcome in just based on that light and dark um, culture that, that we've uh, 
that we've ultimately adapted to and agreed upon. And I think that that's what it's about. Sanity is agreed upon. Norms are agreed upon. Social norms are agreed upon. And that is ultimately why new agreements need to be made. New agreements need to be made amongst human beings. If we know that we've done a lot of things to one another over the years, regardless of color, it doesn't matter. It's not what we're talking about. But there's a lot of stuff that's been done over the years that needs to be adjusted to. Things that have not been straightened out, right? In this country, we got our own problems. We know what they are. But the point is, we walk around as if certain people are supposed to accept the imbalance of things. And that is why this country always has civil unrest because they demand that some live without that. Now, money is a thing that you have to go get. You know, it's a lot of doors that open up for you. It's a lot of different stuff. That's fine. But as it pertains to dignity, as it pertains to respect, as it pertains to apologizing for, for massive, massive uh, murder and all this stuff that, that, that's been done. Some of the social issues that we have, I think, have just been because a lot of that stuff has not has no closure and no apologies. And, and when the apologies do come, it's, it's patronizing and it's it's corporate. And it's basically meant to herd people in one direction or another, not heal people, not help them heal, not help them learn who they are, not help them find an inner confidence that allows them to believe that they do not deserve to be treated less than. See, in this country, certain people believe they deserve to be treated a certain way and other people believe that they're probably going to be treated poorly just Inherently. This is how it goes. That's what needs to change. That's what needs to change. You know, it, it's, it's a situation where, and in my humble opinion, it's just there are certain generations that are still here that want things to still be the same way um, that it used to be. And I just don't think there's any room for that. You know what I mean? If you try to put, if you try to force people back into the spaces they were before the progression of civil rights and things of that nature, I don't think you can effectively have harmony in that space. I don't, I don't think people can go backwards in progression in that way and, and, and not um, tear everything up, honestly. So that's what the generations past and those who are, who are older now but still want the world to be what it was, that's what they got to understand. No one's ever going to be treated that way again willingly by you. It's never going to happen. We're not going to allow that to happen. Um, not because we're threatening against it. It's just because we've evolved through it. That we don't see any fruit in treating people that way. You can't build treating people that way. You can't build viewing people that way. You can't protect yourself viewing people that way. You know, I was thinking about my own family. My, not my own family, but my own lineage. That's the first thing that I thought of when I woke up this morning for some random reason. <laughs> Because I have uh, traced my lineage back many, 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 many generations on all four directions. Now, I don't know if I did it properly. I might have messed up a few names, could throw everything off, but that's not the point. The point is I did the, the work to try to learn about who I am and my family. <laughs> you know what I found? Most of the genealogy that I was able to find was white people. If you didn't know any better, I'm like 80% white. If you look at my genealogy. Now, granted, that is not the case, obviously, because the, the ancestry did not account for any Native American blood for whatever reason, which is like probably a good <laughs> good portion of what I got going on there, more than more than 30 percent. And it also, of course, doesn't account for slaves. My real great, 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 great grandparents, not the people they were owned by. You know, or, or the people that raped them, you know what I mean? So it's one of those situations where it's like I look at it, look back at my history and I say, I don't have any. I don't have any history. I, I, see, I see people that don't look like me, features that don't even show up in my body like, at all. <laughs> I trace back to Andrew Jackson, believe it or not. Ann Moody, Miss Houston. Yeah, one of my great, 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 great grandmother. And Andrew Jackson is like my great, 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 great grand uncle or something, however you say that stupid stuff. But that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. What I'm trying to say is this. There's no way to identify anybody. I'm a black man. All right? And if you look at my genealogy, if you trace me back, I'm a white man. It doesn't matter. 
There's no real race here. There's no, not here. If you come from another country and you trace all the way back, yeah, for sure, you got race there, real race. Here, nobody knows who each other is. Nobody knows who we are. We don't know who we are. So there's no effective way to say black people should be treated this way, white people treated this way. We don't know who we are. And if you think like me, it doesn't matter. Why? Because we're all going to be related tomorrow. <laughs> and I know I've said this on this camera before, and I don't think I've ever heard anyone else say this in life, but I'm going to tell it to you. Just because you're not white today doesn't mean that your kid is not going to marry a white person and you guys never see black again. It's real. It's real. <laughs> Vice versa. You love your, 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 your white lineage, all that? She's going to marry a, a Mexican man. That person's going to marry a Mexican woman. That person's going to marry a Mexican. And your whole family's going to be Mexican. You ain't going to even recognize your genealogy. You're not going to recognize it. So why are you sitting up here capping for your race? We only stand for us or... Nah, they don't matter. Yeah, you're them. 100 years from now. No sign of you. All this that you are, it's gone. You're them. And if you respect that now, you can set your family up, whoever they're going to be, to not only remember you, but be proud of you. <laughs> Unlike me, when I look back at some of my ancestors, of whom I'm not proud of at all, I look and I see... Slave owners, torturers, people who didn't have a lot of love in their hearts, apparently, for people that look like me right now. You think I love them? Because they're my ancestors? Nah, I don't pray to them at all. <laughs> I pray to the people behind them, the slaves, the ones that they didn't care anything about. The natives, the ones that they didn't care anything about. Those are the ones I love. <laughs> they didn't have more money. They had more money? No, you have more money. They had less. They were controlled by the people that I didn't don't appreciate very much. You see how that works? See how history tells a different story when you start talking about the treatment of human beings and fairness? Yeah, it's pride attached to that more so than money in a lot of cases. Just because the McHoustons were wealthy didn't mean it trickled down to their great, 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 great grandson, me. I didn't get none of that money. That didn't translate. Just because they had generational wealth, it didn't translate. I don't have it. And to be honest with you, I don't think they cared. Because I'm the black great, 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 even when it comes to the gang culture. Yeah, you bang this so damn hard, but what you don't realize is your daughter gonna marry your op. And they gonna be them. All your seed, all the stuff, all the people you hate, your seed, they gonna be them. They ain't gonna even remember your hood. They gonna hate your hood. Like we, we need to respect this when we start putting out the energy that we put out against strangers, Amongst our family, amongst our peers, we need to start really giving some credence to the things that we're actually building. Because everybody, to me, it seems like, especially in this era, this instant gratification, I want the attention on me era, I don't really want to do anything but just make it so that everybody can watch me right now era. The only thing that matters is everybody alive right now era. Yeah, that is garbage. You will be forgotten. I promise you. This won't last past today. None of this stuff will be last past today if that's all you own. If that's all you're on is instant gratification, today's, in, you know, norms, mine, only mine and us, that's us, us against the world, you don't realize, don't realize that the world is going to continue to spin and whatever's here is going to keep on shaking up. These people over here, they're going over there. These people over there, they're going over here. Those people over there, they're making over here and you're going to be all over the place. So stop. Give credence to that when you treat them bad because they look like this. Or push them away because you don't agree with how they move and they're different than you. So your kid's going to be over there with them tomorrow. And if you have a mindset that you don't accept them today, when your kid does venture over there, you ain't going to get along with your child. And your child ain't going to get along with you. These are the various things that we set up with our decision making. 
to treat people a certain way, to look at people a certain way, to continue to not think our way through some of these bad norms that aren't going to help us going forward. You got to think your way through that stuff. You've been trained not to. That's the point. You've been raised with a certain propaganda your entire life. From the time you were a baby, you were taught certain things, certain color coordination, certain rhythms, certain jingles, certain tunes, certain this is what it is and that is what it's not. And look at that guy. That's a bad guy. And this is what a good guy looks like. And that's what a prince signing armor. And that is they didn't taught you everything. And that directly trickles down to how you treat me, how you treat your kids. How you treat the stranger, how you treat your boss, how you treat the police, how you view the police. And most importantly, how safe you think I am when you call the police. And how dangerous you think I am when you call the police. All of those things have been put in your head. And if you can't think your way out and around those things so that you can find the norms that make sense for you and your world, you are going to be a part of the problem. And you're not going to know it. You're going to be just like those cops. I didn't do anything wrong. All he had to be was reasonable. All I did was come up here and harass him because a white lady called us. And of course, we let him go as soon as a white lady came around. What's the problem? That's the problem. Your norms are the problem. It's not your heart. It's the crap that you didn't think your way through. That was bad. It's bad energy. The black guy's not going to like that. The white lady, you don't know who she is. That's a false reality that you're working with based on the norms that you were taught that you need to think your way through. That's the spirit of the truth. Racism in this country aligns with norms that we must free think our way through. It's not a heart issue for a lot of people, though it can turn into one if you start to resent the statements that I'm making here, because it can turn into one in my opinion. If you resent what I'm saying, saying, no, 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 I'm a free thinker, I'm a free thinker. Yes, you are. But you got to understand, you've had things embedded in your heart and in your mind since you were a child. You went to school. They taught you what mattered, what didn't. They told you every damn thing. They suggested to you what looks like a threat and what does not. What does not. I'm pointing at a white wall. You know what I'm saying? They've taught us this. They've taught us this. You know, I mentioned earlier there was a, um, you know, there, there are places in this world where Parents don't want their kids to play with black dolls, black parents, parents who are darker than the dolls. They don't want them to play with the dolls, stuff like that. They're taught that. They're taught that. The generations and generations of, of, of white supremacy teaching people to hate their black features. That's brainwashing. Deliberate, intentional. And so it's like, I don't want to be mad at us I don't want to be mad at them I just want to point out what I know needs to happen we need to have more and more conversations such as these disarming any and all of that nonsense pointing it out as the false realities that we agreed upon that don't properly identify any damn thing that leave us vulnerable in every way because of it you don't know who is who so to assume you do just because you see eyes or because you see skin it's just going to leave you open to be deceived you're gonna let them all the foxes in so that's what i'm trying to express to people as well at the end of the day some people are racist not all of them operate as racist some people are not racist but they operate in racist ways there's no perfect way of looking at it it just needs conversation there's no perfect way of, of, of knowing who's who in any of these situations. It just needs conversation. So that's what I try to bring to the table, man. That's what this therapy session is about. I'm not sitting here saying I have it all together. I have a lot of things I need to work through, norms that ain't no good for me. But at least at this point, I can point out and say the work needs to be done. We can't stop thinking here. We can't assume that all of these things are the way that we want them to be as it pertains to how we're viewing them. No, it ain't. It ain't. I'll tell you what would ease my mind in regards to dealing with people. If I could read their minds, I know exactly who I'm dealing with. If I could see the path that they've been on, I know what I'm dealing with. If I don't have those two things, I don't know what I'm dealing with. Their skin ain't gonna tell me that. Their tone of voice ain't gonna tell me that. Looking at them interact with somebody while I'm watching ain't going to tell me that. Seeing them only for five minutes 
or a certain period of time ain't going to give me the fullness of that. So someone calling the police and saying they see somebody that they're not sure who it is, but they have a certain skin color, that definitely ain't going to tell me that. It's just not. So I just want to put that out there, man. That's my therapy session for the day. I don't think I have a whole lot more to share. Um, you know, I, I, I would like for us to be in a space where we don't feel surrounded. And that's how I feel as a black person. I've told you guys that. I ain't never felt safe here. It's one of the reasons why I stay in the house 24-7, seven days a week. It's one of the reasons why I'm stuck in my house. That contributes to it to some degree. Being black here ain't safe at all. Video 44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.